Tuesday, and nonprofits all across the county and across the country are asking for your help. Our next guest provides an invaluable service to 18 year olds who are transitioning out of foster homes to help build a better community outside of foster care. They've also got a special holiday event coming up, so I want to talk to him about all of those things. It's Don Wells, he's the Chief Empowerment Officer for Just in Time Foster Youth. How are you, Don? Good to see you. What's happening? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. It's Appreciate our pleasure. It. Will you tell us a little bit about your organization first and, and just the great things that you do to help foster youth? Sure. Uh, actually, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year of uh, Just in Time for Foster Youth. We started because back then, young people were leaving foster care without any sort of family support. And if you can imagine being 18, and basically you get a garbage bag full of your clothes and maybe a couple hundred bucks and you're sent out to make your life work. That, that would be impossible for young people who had a lot of preparation in their lives. So these young people didn't have that community of support when they were growing up. They've been disconnected basically all their lives, first from their parents and then while they're in foster care, and then they were leaving foster care without that support. So what Just In Time does and what we try to do better than anybody would ever, ever expect, even the young people we serve, is to build a community of support, a lasting community. So once you join our community at 18, as you said, uh, our services last up until the time you turn 27, and it's everything from housing assistance uh, to helping you with uh, laptop and printers for college, uh, you know, get your driver's license, all those things. But the biggest thing we do is everything that we do comes with a volunteer who's part of that service. And so what we want to do is create that connection, that lasting connection that people can count on. And even once they turn 27, those connections still last for volunteers in the community. Tell me how the volunteerism works. Does a person get set up with one foster youth or, or, or is it a group that just kind of speaks with all of them from time to time? You know, that's a great question. What we do is, again, it's a community. So one young person may have eight different volunteers that they're associated with because one of them is helping them get their driver's license. Another one is their financial fitness advisor helping them uh, budgeting. Another one is in touch with them while they're in college to give them support. So it's not just one person because we don't want that situation to happen where a young person is, is relying on one person, that person has to move away or something, and now they're back to square one. So it's a community of support, mm -hmm. which also includes our staff. Uh, more than 60% of our staff have lived experience in foster care. So they help create that community as well. And then the young people get connected to other young people, uh, other youth who have uh, come out of foster care. So it's a large community of support that lasts, again, long after they turn 27, 28. We have one young person, for example, they had a financial fitness advisor who was there when they got married. And then when that person was buying a house, that same uh, person they met at 18 was still there helping them to navigate that purchase. Yeah, it's just invaluable to get an adult who knows what they're doing to kind of help you navigate all the many different decisions you have in life. Tell me a little bit about this so holiday all, event as well. So uh, during the holidays, it's really sort of a, a very, very special day for our young people who often didn't have those holiday events with parents. They didn't have those family events. Uh, we just had a Thanksgiving event uh, a couple of weeks ago where we had about uh, uh, over 100 young people together uh, with Thanksgiving dinner. And this uh, coming week, we have our My First Home for the Holidays event where we're gonna have between 150 and 200 uh, people who are members of our community, some participants, some volunteers, some of our other supporters come together to celebrate our community and we're actually uh, awarding a couple of youth special prizes for being confident, capable, and connected, because that's what we try to help happen for our young people, that they become confident, capable, and connected. And we were serving about 850 individual youth before the pandemic, and this past year it was 1,000 more. So we served about 1,800 individual youth with uh, both those services and resources and those relationships, again, which are the most important things. Yeah, that sounds like you're doing some great work over there. I'll give everybody the website. I've got it here in case they want some more information. J-I-T, uh, let's see, fosteryouth.org is what it is. We've got it on the website right. there. Right, J-I-T, exactly. J-I-T yeah. standing for just of, in time. Yeah. Right, hundreds of volunteer opportunities too. So we uh -huh. welcome everybody to join our team. Don Wells, good to talk to you, Don. Hope you have a great uh, holiday. You too. Thanks for having yep. me.